Hey guys, Quiv the Lazy Geek here and today I want to talk about uh, the autofocus in Nina and how you can kind of set it up from scratch uh, without knowing the characteristics of your autofocuser and if the uh, backlash compensation tool um, that computes backlash in Nina is giving you uh, problems which uh, for a lot of um, cheaper focusers unfortunately it does. Um, so. I'm currently pointed to some random patch of sky and I'll be turning off this light and uh, showing you what I'm doing. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see something, uh, but at least I'll have the screen recording so you know uh, what I'm doing. So see you right back. And uh, okay, so the light is off. Uh, you probably see me a lot less, but here is Nina. And if, if I take a single exposure right now, this is how my stars look like. So obviously I'm out of focus. Uh, we can convince ourselves by just looking at the little donuts. This is a Newtonian with a central obstruction. So we get donuts, donut uh, shapes. I'll also show you quickly the uh, focuser options. And I've kind of uh, re like I've played with my focuser settings recently. So anyway, I need to um, to build them and again kind of from uh, from scratch and for the moment I'll just start with uh, an exposure time of uh, five seconds and let me double check that I don't have some uh, weird settings which I do in here I'm not gonna touch much of those I'm still gonna take trends in parabolic uh, for the moment but uh, you'll see it's not gonna change much for my procedure and I'm gonna set my backlash to zero uh, assuming that I don't know my backlash yet and uh, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do in terms of changes to default settings one of the things by the way is that if you have a default autofocus exposure time but you also have exposure times per uh, filter in the filter wheel which you can do by doing import filters from filter wheel and then changing the time there the time that is recorded in your filters takes precedence so this is what is going to actually get used um, and so let's uh, let's have a look at, uh, at this so first I want to know what is a proper step size for my autofocus right so my step size currently is 10 uh, in the settings and this arrow means that I'll be moving five, so 10 divided by two in one direction. And this double arrow means I'm going to move 50, so five times the uh, step size. And let's try to actually move 50 outwards, so using the right arrow, and see how that uh, reflects on my image. Okay, I think I see a bit of difference. So we're probably already clear of backlash. If we didn't see any difference, it means we're still in the backlash area. And we'd be keeping pressing on either the double arrow or the single arrow until we start seeing changes in the stars. I'll do it one more time, so 50 more, and take another exposure. And actually, I don't see much difference. Maybe we were actually in the backlash. Uh, let's do it one more time and take an exposure. Ah, it's actually getting bigger. So uh, it's getting bigger and probably the first two uh, changes that I made were affected by backlash. So already I'm like thinking maybe my backlash is around 100, right? Because I didn't see starve, starve movement for two 50 step increments. So hmm, backlash maybe around 100. So I'll go the other direction and I'll try to confirm my backlash hypothesis. And we moved one, uh, we moved 50 left and I don't see much change in the star shapes. So hmm, at least 50 backlash, I'd say. Let's do it one more time and uh, let's see what we get. Yeah, not much change, but maybe it got a little bit tighter. So maybe the backlash is a bit less than 100 kind of thing. So it's not a definite figure yet. Uh, but something that I can already think about, what value of backlash will work well for me. Now I do 50 more, and now we see the star shapes change. And if I do again 50 more, let's see how that uh, looks like. It's still smaller, it's even smaller. Um, so I can tell that, like let's do 50 more, let's see on what side of the focus we are. are. Is this going to get smaller? Is it going to be the same size? Or is it going to get larger? 
let's have a look it gets smaller so that means i had stars that would be detectable by this uh by the autofocus system um probably for like roughly 150 steps or so maybe a bit more out of best focus if we assume that we are at best focus right now so that means that the the i can take my autofocus samples within an area of 150 uh, focus of steps um, to the right of best focus or to the left of best focus very approximately and if we look at the standard settings under equipment and the autofocus initial offset steps that is the actual number of steps multiplied by this by the autofocus step size that the focuser will actually go outwards so to the right of the of where it started from uh, at first so we know we have some room with this focuser and that stars will get detected properly very likely and you can double check that by the way under options imaging and you have an annotate image option here if i uh, do that and i do a star detection on my image you can see which stars have actually been uh, properly detected in this example right now this is a very noisy image and i have high noise reduction settings so i probably want in the end to have like five seconds i can see that one focus exposure one second exposure time even if we're so close to focus is only giving me a couple of stars so i know i'll probably want something longer so we could try five seconds see if we get uh, more stars in this case And yes, immediately you can see that the autofocus routine will work much better with five seconds. So I've already learned a lot. I've learned that from the point of best focus, I can go 150 steps to the left, 150 steps to the right, and probably be fine in terms of Nina actually detecting the stars. I also know that one second exposure time is not enough at least not for my uh, conditions. So I'm putting it at five seconds with this particular L filter. I need to do that again for each filter to make sure that I have something that works for all of my, my filters in terms of uh, exposure time. So here we are, we have uh, those elements and we also know that my backlash is around 100. So there's a lot that I've gleaned with just doing this and thinking about how my star shapes are evolving. Okay, so now I'm gonna do um, a bit more to the left. So inwards or let me think, maybe I could launch an autofocus method but before that I know that I have roughly 150 steps of definite like room to breathe on each side of the critical zone of, of focus but my focus could start where I'm already at very much out of focus so I want to keep some margin so I want to use around half of that so that would be around 80 steps right so 80 steps um, to the right of where we started would be well, if I go to my settings, equipment, the autofocus step size size would be 20, right? 20 times four is 80. So that's, it seems to me that it would be a kind of a, of a good setting for this particular focuser based on my little playing around with those arrows there and see how the star shapes uh, move around. So what I can do right now is I'm gonna try to compensate for the backlash. So I'm gonna go a bit more to the left by 10 steps, 15 steps, 20 steps, maybe 30. Okay, now we should be at 30 more to the left. Take another exposure and look at how the stars evolve. Yeah, they're a bit smaller. We're probably very close to best focus right now. And now I know my, my, that my backlash is around 100, so I'm gonna move 100 uh, to the right so that when the autofocus sequence starts, it will actually start moving immediately. Otherwise, if I don't set that up, the autofocus would try to move 80 steps to the right. That would be within the backlash distance. And so it would not have moved at all from the current point of best focus. So let's do that. Okay, 50. 50, we're now at 100. I should be, um, I can double check where I am. The star shapes are probably slightly bigger, but not, not much more than what we have right now. And, 
Oh yeah, they are bigger. So there is some change. So my backlash is definitely less than 100. That's something that I've learned by this little uh, operation there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually launch the, um, the autofocus sequence right now and see how it looks like without my backlash, com backlash compensation, but with my proper exposure time of five seconds and my step size of 20 with the uh, offset steps of four. So let's do that. And um, we, can, we could watch it together, but I'll probably cut to when it is done. Okay, and the uh, sequence is done. Now you can see that my curve fitting had a lot of trouble with those points there on the right. And the best focus point in the end was the average between my trend line and intersection and my curve fitting, which is here. It's not correct. Uh, it's not that horrible either, but it's definitely not the perfect um, autofocus. Uh, the perfect focus point. Now from this curve, we can immediately see that in this area on the right of the curve, we're pretty much flat. My HFR is not changing a lot. And that's because of the backlash, just like as, as, as I explained in a previous uh, video on uh, the theory of autofocus and Nina. And we can count the number of steps that this is happening. And this is one, two, three, four, five steps. Each steps is 20 focus, focus steps. So it confirms my assumption that I have around 100 steps of uh, backlash, right? So we can immediately see that here. Um, the other thing that I can see is that otherwise, my current assumption of having a step size of 20 with four, um, four steps to the uh, to the left and the right of the autofocus using the offset se steps looks really good because it means we'd have just this section of the curve on the bottom, which looks perfect. So I think this is a great assumption. And I can also see that pretty far away from focus, um, Nina is able to detect stars and perform HFR calculation. So there is also room to breathe if we start from uh, a focus posi position that is pretty far from best focus. So I think these uh, this step size of 20 with the number of initial offset steps of four is perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set my backlash to 100 and see how that looks like in uh, when I rerun the autofocus. So let's start, let's go into the advanced settings. I'll set my backlash in and out because for most focusers that, numbers sh that number should be the same. Uh, validate with 100 and we can start the autofocus and see how that looks like. And once it's done, I'll, um, I'll uh, cut through to there directly. And we're done. So this is um, a decent looking curve. It's not perfect. One of the reasons it's not perfect is that I've moved a little bit on my seat, on my chair here. So it has actually made the telescope vibrate while it was expo exposing, so bad me. Um, but we can see that the end point that we end up at is perfect, right? We are at exactly the right spot where we want to be. If I go to my uh, image and look at the last exposure that was taken, yeah, it looks sharp. It looks like we're really like on pretty much the point of best focus. So we're doing good here. Plus, we can see that on neither side of the curve do we have a flat section anymore. Uh, which means that we are compensating backlash pretty well. Now, if we want to have perfect backlash compensation, the only way of doing that is really to uh, check that um, with those little arrows there, that if I move a bit out again, uh, the HFR changes a little bit. It's very difficult to have extremely precise backlash measurement. Uh, but we know that the zone of critical focus here is fairly wide. It's not the end of the world. So I'll keep it to 100 uh, for the time being. Uh, one of the things, by the way, on those focus curves that you noticed is those little red bars there, right? So those red bars, what do they represent? They represent how um, valid that particular autofocus frame is. And by that, I mean for each autofocus frame, um, we remember not only the HFR, the average HFR of the stars within that frame, but also the standard deviation of the HFR of the stars within that frame. And that tells us how reliable 
a frame is, the smaller that standard deviation is, the more reliable, the more that frame is probably making sense to be used in the autofocus routine. The larger that value is, the less we should take into account. And that's why both of the trend lines and the parabolic and hyperbolic fit use a weighted fitting method that takes into account that standard deviation to make sure that we count we take into account points affected by wind or like me by uh, movement of my stupid chair um, much less than other points and to have a good fitting that we like we see here with a, a perfect end point so here we are we have a good curve and we've determined all of the autofocus parameters that really matter right we had the autofocus step size 20 i know it's good the initial offset steps the default value is four and we keep it at four my exposure time is five seconds or in my particular case for that particular filter it's five seconds and we have the uh, other options are the autofocus method is star HFR we should keep it that way the only reason you want to go to contrast detection is if you have a refractor contrast detection does not work well on telescopes that have a central uh, obstruction uh, a autofocus disable guiding that is if you want to disable guiding during the autofocus this can be useful for OAGs for off-axis off, off guiders uh, for me it's not an off-axis guider so I keep it to off I want to keep guiding while I'm taking my autofocus exposures especially if I'm doing narrow band and they're 10 seconds long I want to make sure that I have the best star shapes possible uh, the curve fitting is something that I explained in the previous video. I choose personally trends in parabolic because I'm fairly close to the point of best focus uh, in my own uh, with my own tw step size of uh, 20. And uh, another one is the focuser settle time. The focuser settle time is basically how long you want to wait after the focuser has moved before you take the next exposure. Uh, this can be useful for um, off-axis off guiders um, on one side and also and especially for in my experience for belt focusers so if you use a camera lens or a telescope with like the red cat or the vixen vsd uh, that's super expensive scope that uses a helicoidal or whatever you pronounce that uh, focuser and you have a belt to do perform autofocus i noticed that the belt will actually vibrate the whole assembly while it's uh, moving and we want to settle for maybe one or two seconds before we take the next exposure next exposure the autofocus number of attempts is uh, the autofocus we saw last week um, or actually last time that the uh, Nina will double check that the focus is good is better than what it started with and if it's worse than what it started with it will abandon or if this is set to more than one it will actually try again so I've set this to two I think the default is one the number of frames per point is the uh, number of exposures you want to take per um, uh, focus autofocus point so if I go back to my curve here I took one exposure per point but I could take two or three and average the HFR in those two or three frames to get higher quality signal for my curve fitting for me it doesn't seem to be useful but I know some other some other people are using that uh, setting uh, another one is use the brightest end stars so if you want to use the brightest stars like the 10 brightest stars you can do that we have inner and outer crop ratio that lets you focus on an area of interest for the autofocus so if you want to center to focus on the center of the frame which is useful for some telescopes where uh, the center um, and the outer edges there's a difference in sharpness so instead of focusing on the whole frame you actually want to focus on your region of interest in the center with using those two parameters you can also actually create a donut if you want to set to focus on an area in between the center and the outer edge of the frame and apparently that's useful for some Takahashi telescopes and I have no idea why but I'm told it is, it is useful then we have the backlash in and out uh, setting which we all know and love um, and then we have binning binning which is 
uh, if you want the camera to perform binning while it's doing the exposures so that if you do a binning of value of two it means that uh, the, uh, the sets of two by two pixels would behave as one pixel you get better signal to noise ratio so if you do that you'd be less affected by uh, noise so star detection would perform better but because each star uh, will be using fewer pixels the HFR calculation should be a bit less precise so this is it for how I typically set up my focuser when I really start with a new focuser and let me tell you the EEF gave me a lot of trouble uh, hopefully this has been of uh, help to you and uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this, if you found it us useful, please like and please subscribe. And uh, yes, again, thank you so much and talk to you soon.